Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. For God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Can you believe it's a new month? Wow. That was quick, right? And um, all is well. And you start today off with that attitude that all is well and pick yourself up and don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear. Don't be moved by what you feel. Be moved by the word of the living God. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. God bless you today. We send blessings your way in the name of Jesus. It is well, it is well, it is well. And um, yeah, man, it's it's a uh, it's another day to get it in. It's another day to get it in. I'm just um, I'm stirred up, man. I, I was I got up this morning and I was able to do something physically I hadn't been able to do in a minute. And um, I'm just so grateful and so thankful to God. And uh, uh, Aloha. Yeah, back to you. God bless you. I'm just so grateful. And, uh, you know, that just I, puts me put this on my mind today. Do something uh, that you couldn't do before. Believe in, in a way that you haven't believed before. And and let's just really step it up, man. Step our faith up. Step our our joy up. Uh, let's just step it up. Let's just let the let the enemy know that every time he thought he had us, we just kept coming back. And, um, you know, in your life, you're blessed today. I declare that you're blessed today. Uh, how do I do that? Well, you're blessed uh, and empowered by the almighty God and his grace. And receive it. Somebody says, how? Lord, I receive that I'm blessed today. Go ahead and try that. Lord, I receive that I'm blessed today. Say it again. Lord, I receive that I am blessed today. Sometimes it's just a simple confessing of your mouth and adding your agreement with what God said about you. That just makes the difference. It makes the difference. I'm telling you, man. A um, lot of, lot of, Interesting things are going on in the, in the earth, but you know what? A lot of good things are going on in the earth as well. People are getting born again. Um, they made Jesus the Lord of their lives. Uh, uh, thank you guys for joining me for yesterday's service. And, and uh, it's just amazing. People, uh, when they understand grace, they're empowered to change. And, and they want to get born again. They want to get saved. And I really enjoyed myself yesterday I, I probably got a little too silly but I, I i just just got this reality that it's it's time for us to let joy arise and the enemies will be scattered and sometimes in your greatest challenges if you can just walk in the joy of the lord and uh just walk joyfully before the lord uh, I'm telling you, God, God can do some amazing things in your life. And, um, uh, I want to give a shout out to our e-church, you know, you guys are amazing. I mean, you just, you're as committed online as you are, you know, uh, live. And, um, I don't know. Laughter is, is healing. Laughter is, is strength. I know I'm strengthened with last laughter. I, I I just, you know, I was just, it's just something about being able to, to, to have joy in, in, and when you could have a bunch of sorrow, um, it's, it's amazing. There's a power that's released when the joy of the Lord is, is really, really uh, operating in our lives. There's a power that's released. So, I pray that you experience that power. And uh, yeah, that's right, Jennifer. Laughter works good like medicine. 
And uh, I think that's what we had yesterday. Laughter working good, like, like medicine. And, you know, it's just a blessing of the Lord. And, and uh, we just, we love you guys, man. We, we love you. We want you to, to be well. We want you to enjoy your life. We want you to, you know, lay hold of everything that God has, has made for you. And there are enemies to your joy. Uh, strife is an enemy to your joy. Make your mind up. You're not going to be a part of it. Don't, don't do it. Don't let maybe hurt, disappointment, you know, emotions put you in a place where you become envious, critical, and full of strife against others. And then that begins to occupy your mind. It begins to occupy your thinking. And it robs you of the joy of the Lord. Don't let it happen. You know, um, I believe with all my heart that the joy of the Lord will will uh, paralyze the devil. I, I, I think he hates it. I really do. Uh, I think Satan hates to see us happy and joyful. Satan hates to see Christian people full of joy. I mean, after all of the stuff he did in your life to try to get you down, to try to get you depressed, to try to get you worried, to try to get you to go on attack mode and become an enemy to the cross and you just rise up and you you laugh. Um, uh, it, it, it's a powerful thing. And learn how to laugh. Learn how to laugh. Uh, I'm, I'm learning that. I saw that yesterday in the sermon. I, I just, I don't know. I, I was so, I, I was just, I was just happy. I, I was just, you know, we were ending a series and, and it was like, wow, let's just be grateful to God. And, and that is right. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. So joy produces strength. And I also believe that joy is the fuse to your faith. I really believe that. I believe that, you know, when you're happy and you're full of joy, uh, I tell you what, it, it becomes a powerful, powerful thing. And so uh, I was really excited about uh, getting with you guys today and sharing uh, my heart with you today and, you know, kicking off this month, the first day of this month with, um, I don't know, just being just so grateful and so thankful that we can uh, look back over the last several months and, and like, you know, God, you got us through this, man. God, you bought us through. And, you know, just, just sit back and, and, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> just just sit back and just like, man, yeah, that was that was tough, but we made it. We made it, man. And uh and I just want to celebrate this day. Just we made it. And you made it. And you know what? You're you're gonna continue to make it. And that's what I want to bring to you today. You're gonna continue to make it, but you gotta make sure that you get out of complacency and that's what we're going to talk about today get out of complacency because don't settle for where you are you know god has so much more to do with you he's not through with you i remember um james cleveland when he was alive he wrote this song please be patient with me god is not through with me yet when God gets through with me, I will come forth as pure gold. And, um, and and I think there's a lot of truth in that, that we've got to learn how to be patient with one another and, uh, and recognize that God's not done yet. He's not going to finish uh, until, you know, the day that he returns and he's not done with us yet. And so, you know, you're still being transformed. You're still being uh, formed into this wonderful masterpiece. Uh, and, and I think we just need to be grateful and just thankful to that, you know? And so, yeah, I'm patient, man. Uh, and you know what I learned? I got to be patient with myself as well. And, and I'm saying that to you, you got to be patient with yourself as well. Don't get so frustrated that you start beating yourself up because you're not where you want to be at this time. Lord, 
he will take care of you. All is well. God will take care of you. You are a work in progress. I appreciate that. You are a work in progress. Amen. And, uh, you know, and remember, like we said, just because something is hard doesn't mean that becomes an excuse for not doing it. And like I said, if it was easy, everybody would have some. And you just got to you got to pick yourself up, you know, emotionally. You don't always get up feeling, you know, really high in joy and, and on top of things. You got to speak to yourself, man, in Psalms and spiritual songs. You got to you got to talk yourself and, and, and ask Jesus to help you to get out of that funk and just say, listen, I'm not going to have this kind of day. Um where I'm down and fighting depression all day, that ain't happening to me. And uh, I'm going to praise the Lord. And if you just barely lift your hands up, hallelujah, you got started. And then that hand go a little higher, hallelujah, you got started. And then the next thing you know, the both of them up there, you know. And uh, I just really expect some great things, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy birthday. Somebody's got a birthday today, praise God. Well, let's go ahead and, and get into this. I want to spend a little time making some confessions today. Let's start off with Psalms 91 and let's let's get it in here. Let's get it in here. Amen. I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. In Jesus name, I am Psalms 91 equipped. All is well with me and my house. In Jesus name, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Come on, let's make some confessions about wisdom and guidance. I think that'll be a blessing to you today. Let's make this confession say after me, the spirit of truth abideth in me and teaches me all things and he guides me into all truths. Therefore, I confess I have perfect knowledge of every situation and every circumstance that I come up against for I have the wisdom of God. I trust in the Lord with all my heart and I lean not into my own understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge him and he directs my path. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. I let the word of Christ 
dwell in me richly in all wisdom. I do follow the good shepherd and I know his voice and the voice of a stranger I will not follow. Jesus has made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Therefore, I confess I have the wisdom of God and I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am filled with the knowledge of the Lord's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I am a new creation in Christ. I am his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. I have put off the old man and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created me. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened and I'm not conformed to this world, but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Come on, let's confess, make some confessions over your comfort and strength. Amen. Let's do that. I am increasing in the knowledge of God. I am strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. I am delivered from the power of darkness and I am translated into the kingdom of his dear son. I am born of God and I have world overcoming faith residing on the inside of me. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keeps my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus and things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and of good report. I think on these things. I let no corrupt communication proceed out of my mouth, but that which is good to edify, that it may minister grace to the hearer. I grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby I am sealed unto the day of redemption. I speak the truth of the word of God in love, and I grow up into the Lord Jesus Christ in all things. No man shall take me out of his hand, for I have eternal life. I let the peace of God rule in my heart, and I refuse to worry about anything. I will not let the word of God depart from before my eyes, for it is life to me. I have found it, and it is health and healing to all my flesh. God is on my side. God is in me now. Who can be against me? He has given unto me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Therefore, I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am a believer. And these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak with new tongues. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Jesus gave me the authority to use his name and that which I bind on earth is bound in heaven and that which I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind the principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. I bind and cast down spiritual wickedness in high places, and I render them harmless and ineffective against me in the name of Jesus. 
I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. For I am his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that I should walk in them. I have declared these things and they are so in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Now you've released all of that. It's been released into the atmosphere. And, and uh, I just believe that, uh, you know, it's coming back to you. Praise the Lord. You know, the Bible says we'll have what we say. And I believe that. I believe that when you believe, you you, you speak. And I believe when you speak, you know, you believe. And I, I think a lot of things happen when we made these confessions and we believed it by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles near you, let me share a little something for you before we go in the book of Philippians. Uh, let's go chapter three. Philippians chapter three. And starting at verse 12. Now, we've been we've been talking about let me switch up here a little bit. We've been talking about complacency and we, we've talked about the difference between complacency and contentment. And when you're when you're complacent, you literally are settling for something. You're just you're settling for uh, just where you are. And um, one of the greatest changes or excuse me, one of the greatest dangers in the Christian life, I believe, and, 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 I, and this is pretty straightforward one of the greatest dangers in a christian life is complacency it is not god's will for us to be complacent it's just not and it's something easy to fall into if you're if you're not mentally aware of what it is and so i don't think god wants us to be complacent complacency is a feeling of being satisfied with how things are and uh and not working or wanting to try to make them better Think about it. You're satisfied with how things are, but you're not wanting uh, to try to make them better. That is a complacent person. And God doesn't want us to do that. that that's called settling. You know, you're settling for how things how things are and, and you're not you don't have any mos motivation to to make them better. It's actually self satisfaction, especially when accompanied by an unawareness of an actual danger or deficiency. It's like complacency is and this is my opinion it is a uh, a deadly enemy to your christian growth complacency is a deadly enemy to your christian growth you can't get to the place where you're just kind of satisfied with your relationship with god satisfied with what you know about god satisfied with your walk satisfied with your intimacy and just not want to do anything to make it better that is dangerous and it is an enemy to your Christian growth. I, I never thought of complacency like this as being dangerous and an enemy to the Christian growth, but it is. Um, Paul gave us a warning in the book of Philippians about complacency. And I, and I want to I want to look over this um, Philippians chapter three. And verse 12, he says, not as though I had already attained either were already perfect, but I followed after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I apprehended of Christ Jesus. I'll read this in the Amplified. Not that I have now attained this ideal or have already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold of and to grasp and to make my own that for which Christ Jesus, the Messiah has laid hold of for me. And, um, so he he pressed forward, you know, verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, I'm going to forget those things which are behind and I'm going to reach forth to those things which are before. So Paul says, I've not I've not I've not um, captured and, and obtained everything. But what I am doing he says this one thing I do, and that was amazing to me, the one thing he did, forgetting about the things that are behind. The one thing he did, forget about the things that are behind. 
The one thing he did, forget about the things that are behind. Wow. The one thing he did, forget about the things that are behind. Yeah, I, I believe that you should not only forget about the bad things that are behind, the regretful things that are behind, the sinful things that are behind. But I believe sometimes you, you have to kind of uh, enjoy the victories, but don't live, don't live there either. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm, Paul said, one thing I do, I'm forgetting about the things that are behind. So my past, if I'm not careful, can become an instrument to just keep me there. There, there are more victories. There are greater accomplishments. There, there, there's still bigger things to attain, to, to obtain in your life. Uh, wow. Paul said that one thing that, that I do, uh, one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind. But then he also said, but I'm reaching to the things that are before. I'm reaching to the things that are before. All right. So I'm forgetting what's behind and I'm reaching to the things that are before. You, If you keep living in the past, you're, you're going to just, you're going to stay there. We all have a past, but we don't live there. And I'm reaching to the things that are before. There's some things ahead of you. Reach for those things that are ahead of you. Reach for those things that are ahead of you. There's some stuff ahead of you. Reach for those things that are ahead of you. Reaching uh, for those things that are ahead of you. That's important. He described this reaching as a press, which means if you're going to press something, then there must be opposition that's there. I mean, you're pressing, so there must be an opposition coming against you. And everything that's worth obtaining is worth the press. Everything that's worth obtaining is worth the press. And I say to you today, it's time to press on. It's time to, it's time to press on, you know, shake the dust off, shake the hurt off, the disappointment, the letdown, the betrayal, the regret. Let's press on. Let's press on. He said in verse 14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Dude, that's what I'm doing, man. I'm like, I'm pressing for the prize, man. I, I, everything in my life right now, I'm focusing in on, you know, what, what would Jesus think about this? Um, you know, me standing in front of him, I wanna make sure that I pressed. I wanna make sure I did all I could do. I don't wanna stand before him lazy, slothful, fearful, Oh, God, I didn't say it because I was afraid of what the people might say. Oh, Lord, I didn't say it because, oh, my God, they might not like me no more. Or, oh, my God, they might leave my church. Or, oh, they might not want to have nothing to do with me. No, I, I can't do that. I got to I gotta be a, give an account to God. And I made my mind up when I got into the ministry that even if I'm making mistakes, I'm going to be doing something for the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, because, you know, the only people that don't make mistakes are people who don't do none. And, and I just made my mind up. I'm going to be open to press in on where God leads me and what God wants me to do and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and that's, that's what's so important here. So he goes on and he says, let us therefore, as many as be perfect or complete, be thus minded. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ. Whoa, now that is strong. For there are many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears who walk and live as enemies of the cross of Christ, the anointed one. Enemies of the cross of Christ, enemies of what that cross stood for, enemies of, of um, the grace of God. I mean, you know, you there's a lot of enemies of the grace of God and they're, you know, enemies of 
the fact that, um, you know, Jesus shed his blood on that cross to give us a new covenant. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, sacrificed his body so that we could have uh, peace and so we can have wholeness in every area of our lives. And I just wonder what happens uh, when you become an enemy to what Jesus accomplished on the cross. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I guess we just continue to pray for people, but I don't ever want to be in that category of an enemy of the cross. Lord, 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 I don't ever want to be in that category of being an enemy of the cross. And um, so he goes on here and he says, um, whose end, oh, well, he tells us here, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversion is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I tell you, we got a lot of good stuff to look forward to. Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I don't, I just, I think we got a lot of stuff to look forward to, man. And, um, you know, when I talk about, I talk about Jesus and what he's made available for me and Jesus, how he, he, how he gave his life for me and, and shed his blood for me. And, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. So I know it may be difficult to forget the things you've done. It comes up. Listen, man, I get it. I get it. But you got to press. That's why it's a press. It's difficult to forget it. That's why it's a press. That's why it's a press. You press on, you press on, you know, and you just kind of, you just press on. And it gets better. And, and then you ask God, help me in this journey. Show me what I need to do. It's like either you press on or else. And I, I get this as, a, as the implication. You press on or else. I mean, if you're not pressing on, you're just probably going to be standing still, right? Because you are either growing in maturity or you're growing to some degree of complacency. You are not standing still. You are not standing still. And so it's like press on and move forward or don't press on uh, and, and move the other way. But I think some people have the mindset that, you know, if, uh, if I don't press on, I'm going to stand still. No, you're, 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 you're not standing still. And, and that's something that's very important. So the problem with complacency is that it causes us to live off our past victories. And I think that's what I was trying to say. The problem with complacency is it causes us to live off our past victories. Can I share with you one more scripture in the book of Isaiah 43? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. And verse 18 says, uh, and I'll read verse 18 and 19. He says, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? It will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. He said, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. So like I said, the problem with complacency is that it causes us to live off our past victories. I don't want to just be stuck in the former things, okay? And I think a lot of times we're, we're stuck in our heyday kind of deal. I, I don't want to be stuck in my heyday, my former things. I, I believe that there are better things that are there for me. Um, God wants to do a new thing. Say that God wants to do a new thing. And I'm telling you, God is doing a new thing with you right now. You just listen to him. He's doing a new thing in you right now. Um, he's going to make ways. In, he's going to make a way through things that were hard. You know what I'm saying? It used to be hard in the past. God's going to make a way through that thing. He's going to make rivers through deserts. I like that. Maybe you have some dry places in your life. He's going to make the rivers go through those dry places. 
he's going to make a path through that wilderness. And so I just tell you, get ready. God is working right now. If you'll make your mind up not to be complacent and um, and press. OK. Oh, it's hard. But press anyway. Oh, it's tough. We'll press anyway. Oh, they're not going to like me. We'll press anyway. Uh, just, just make your mind up. I'm, I'm going to push and press uh, on into the thing that God is trying to show me and 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 do that. So, hey, man, look, um, we're out of time. We had a great confession today. Um, we're, we're getting out of, of complacency. We were taking the next exit out of complacency and uh, we're turning right on contentment. Amen. Guys have an amazing day today. Love you so, so much. All is well with you in your house in Jesus name.